Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, I said it's getting hot in here, so hot. So we are going to be taking a look at one of the craziest destructive powers within the entire series, the Magu Magu no Mi. The Magu Magu no Mi is a Logia type fruit that allows its user to conjure, manipulate, and become scary hot magma. It was consumed in the series by now Fleet Admiral Sakazuki, formerly known as Marine Admiral Akainu, and it was first unleashed upon us during the mighty Marine Fudar. This fruit takes its name fairly directly for the Japanese word for magma, pronounced as maguma, which was stolen from the English word magma, which was stolen from the ancient Greek word, which was also magma. Although to make it fit the devil fruit naming scheme here in One Piece, the ma was chopped off and it just became magu. Now, as for the wonderful world of English, we have another funky situation where a native word was taken, given a One Piece cleansing, and then returned to us in the form of the mag mag fruit, according to the Viz translation, which I don't know at this point, I feel like we could just call it the magma magma fruit and be done with it, but I guess it is what it is. Oh, and in case you're wondering, and I doubt you are, but this fruit does not yet have a name in the Funimation dub because it has never actually been referenced in the series itself, just extended manga media like SBS segments. Weird English name or no though, this fruit is home to some simply terrifying power. Given that magma is the hottest naturally occurring permanent substance on earth. I had that last part in because yes, I know that things like plasma and x-rays can reach mind boggling temperatures, but magma is still much hotter than anything you'd want your body encountering. In fact, the average temperature of magma sits somewhere between 700 and 1300 degrees Celsius which is about 1300 to 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. And while we're here, I'd also like to point out that in regards to this fruit, we are talking about magma rather than lava. Although the difference between the two is a mostly semantic exercise because lava is essentially just magma that has reached the surface of the planet through a volcano vent. So fun fact there. And so the user of the Magu Magu no Mi basically takes on one of the ultimate defensive as well as one of the ultimate offensive powers within the series. Because here's the thing about becoming a big old glob of semi-molten death, you are going to receive a godlike advantage advantage in almost all combative situations. Without the use of Haki or an opposing Logia element, the user of the Magu Magu no Mi is effectively unstoppable in battle. And this is because first up, most opponents of this user will be doing everything they can to avoid close quarters combat because even a teeny tiny touch of magma is going to result in devastating effects. And not only that, but even if they did get in some good hits, this fruit ability is a Logia and so intangibility of the user does apply in that situation. Once again, unless Haki or I guess Sea Stone is involved. But I'd actually go so far as to say that if you are not an armament Haki user, then you stand no chance whatsoever against the Magu Magu no Mi. And all of this is before we even consider the fact that the Magu Magu no Mi can also attack in this theoretical battle. And not only can they provide apocalyptic techniques up close, but keeping your distance also isn't a huge help because the sheer quantity of magma that this fruit appears to give its user access to is off the scales. I mean, in the series, Sakazuki has pulled off some pretty absurd attacks with seemingly no limit to the magma that he can conjure. Although I'm sure that there is one. It's just so large that we have never been able to find it. And speaking of Mr. Flower Shirt, this fruit could not have been paired with a more devastating individual who I believe has really been able to push and innovate an already staggering power. For example, as the series stands at the moment, one of Sakazuki's signature techniques would be to fire a vast quantity of magma fist straight up into the air and then watch mercilessly as a rain of hell falls down upon everyone in the immediate vicinity, friends and foes alike. And to some degree, Sakazuki doesn't particularly care about collateral damage either due to his philosophy of absolute justice, which sickeningly enough is what makes him such an efficient user of the Magu Magu no Mi because he is not afraid to unleash its full force. There is no restraint whatsoever, only painful fiery death. But hey, I suppose that is just the wonders of absolute justice for you. But other than that, Sakazuki is a primarily brawling style of fighter, preferring to transform his fists into magma and use them to perform the regular duties that his fists often would, such as punching, for example. And you know what? On one occasion, a magma punch was even able to blow off a large portion of the strongest man in the world's face clean off, so it's clearly a very effective boost in power. Ah, and just on power, I haven't noted this yet, but the One Piece Vivia card data book makes the very, very bold claim that the Magu Magu no Mi is in fact the devil fruit that sports the quote, highest offensive power. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the most dangerous or the best fruit or even the strongest fruit. It just means that magma does more direct ouchy ouch than other fruits, which is still pretty incredible and not to be taken lightly. 
but moving on. So, Logios are always fun to talk about in regards to Awakening, because they are, at the time of this recording, the only class of Devil Fruits whom we have not seen any confirmed evidence of said Awakening, if such a thing is indeed possible at all, which, you know, I'm sure it probably is. As a result, all we have to go on is speculation. Glorious speculation. But that speculation goes as follows, by taking all of its ideas from the island of Punk Hazard, which famously served as the battleground for Marine Admirals Aokiji and Akainu to do battle to decide who would become the next Fleet Admiral. This fight lasted an absolutely brutal 10 days and left both combatants with severe permanent injuries. However, it also had a lasting effect on the island of Punk Hazard as well, transforming it into a Pokeball style existence, whereby half of the island is perpetually on fire, while the other half is covered in snow, which rather notably are the respective inferior elements of both magma and ice, at least when it comes to Devil Fruits. But the theory of Logia Awakenings I enjoy most proposes that ordinary Logia powers do not have the ability to shape the environment to the scale, and it really does require that little bit of extra devastating oomph to permanently reshape the climate of an entire area. And there are other little bits of evidence here and there to support this idea, such as Raijin Island, you know, the place that gets perpetually hit by lightning, and the idea that that may have been caused by an awakened user of the Goro Goro no Mi. In any case, I find it to be an interesting thought, albeit slightly horrifying, that it is possible for the Magamaga no Mi to become even more powerful than it already is. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a magma human. The Magamaga no Mi is one of the few fruits in existence that is confirmed to be a higher order fruit, meaning that there is a devil fruit that exists in a strictly inferior manner to it. In this case, being the Meromero no Mi, once wielded by poor Casti Ace, before he was given a good old magma fisting. But the fact that the Magamaga no Mi is a higher order than an already insanely powerful fruit only goes to serve its legend more. Also, a lot of this video has focused on topics like combat and destruction, but the Magu Magu no Mi may actually hold some hidden potential that is actually of some benefit to society in the way of magma power. I mean, I'm not going to pretend to understand how, but good old Iceland has been experimenting with wielding magma power from their absolute spoil of volcanoes for a couple of years now, and in my shallow assessment of the matter, if all goes well, I don't see why the user of the Magu Magu no Mi would not be able to turn themselves into a handy power source, if they were slightly more benevolent than Sakazuki, that is, I guess. Earlier, I mentioned that the Magamaga no Mi sports the highest defensive ability of any Devil Fruit in existence, but that should not be taken to mean that it is invincible, because there are a wide array of defenses out there to deal with it. One of which we've already mentioned is Haki, which was displayed by both Jinbei and Shanks, who were able to block Sakazuki's magma respectively. At another point though, the blue flames of Marco's Tori Tori no Mi Model Phoenix were also able to effectively absorb the magma damage. Although to be fair, it is a mythical Zoan type, so you probably won't find yourself in a situation dealing with something like that too often. But there are also other proud defenses that the user of the Magu Magu no Mi may not actually be able to break, with another example coming to mind being Bartolomeo's Bari Bari no Mi. And now here we are at the conclusion, and all I can say is that this fruit is ridiculous. There is no denying that if you have even the slightest inclination towards a combat-based lifestyle, then this fruit is a no-brainer. And really, the only main argument I can make against it is that it doesn't have a lot of day-to-day -day utility. It's another one of those destruction for the sake of destruction fruits, and so it immediately loses a chunk of appeal to me because of that. You'd also have to be exceptionally careful with how you use it, because a spot of magma here and there, and you could very easily cause the deaths of those around you, as well as the destruction of everything you hold dear. Now, with that said, would I turn down the power to become magma? Probably not. It's far too good an opportunity, even if there are certainly other fruits out there that I would want to consume more than this one. But this fruit is still somewhat highly recommended. And with that, we are going to commit the Magu Magu no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next time, we're going to be taking a break from all of this world-destroying Paramecia, mythical Zoan, and devastating Logia business, because it's washing day for the Grand Line review, and so we'll be examining a fruit that most casual fans probably don't even realize really exists, being Vice Admiral Suru's unique and quirky Washu Washu no Mi. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Magu no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. What makes you stand out from all the One Piece Anitubas on the platform? 
Oh, wow. I feel like this is a bit of a job interview now. But I guess if I was to succinctly state my product differentiation, I'd say that it's my commitment to delivering a concise and easily digestible video. My content is not made to waffle on for ages. I want it to be very lean, packed with information or opinions, and to not um and ah at all, or even take particularly long pauses because I think that is a waste of your time as a viewer. I'd also like to hope that I provide something of a unique perspective by way of being a sarcastic Australian man amongst the sea of of, on average, much louder Americans. And I think it seems to have worked out you know, fairly well so far. When chapter 1000 of One Piece is released, do you have plans for a celebration on this channel? Ooh, you know what? I really don't. And that's maybe something that I should really start considering. Because if all goes well, chapter 1000 should be hitting in the latter portion of next year, and oh, wow, that's exciting. In terms of what I do, oh man, I don't know. How do you comprehensively celebrate 1000 chapters of story? So if you've got any ideas then drop them in the comment section below because I am honestly at a bit of a loss. Do you have a pocket watch, Liam? If not, do you have a wristwatch? I 100% have a pocket watch. What kind of lebian do you take me for, sir? But yes, I was given a pocket watch for my 21st birthday from my housemates at uni. And oh, that was much longer ago than I'd like to admit. I do still have the pocket watch though. And here is a picture from the day in question. It is a very, very funky watch. 